Hey guys, this is Tim from Tim's Electronics Lab and welcome back to a new post bag. Now as you can see, uh, I've got a couple of packages to open and yeah, they arrived in uh, the period of last week. So let's start with this one because this is rather interesting. It says children's scarf, whatever that may be. It's listed as a value of $1.83 and has a weight of 0.02 kilograms, which seems to be about right to weight. But the children's scarf is definitely not what I expect to be in here. It's captain tape. So. I ordered some captain tape since I didn't have it yet. Let's get this out of here. Oh, it's all sticky. The sides are all sticky. And so, yeah. Captain tape. I think that this is a roll of 33 uh, millimeters thick. So that's uh, pretty okay, and it's bent a little bit during transport, but not to worry. It supposedly still works, so not sure how many meters this is, but uh, hey, Captain Tape is Captain Tape. So onto the, and this also came with it, looks like something uh, plasticky during packaged. Well, on to the next things. Uh, this one says auto adapter connector. It's a uh, weight of 0 0.05 kilograms, a value of $5, which is uh, quite a lot. And I think that this is for one of my upcoming videos. And let's use the knife. And I haven't told. Oh no, this is uh, this is the rubber band. So 80 millimeters by five millimeters and 0 0.5 millimeters thick. Now there's only one in here. Yeah, there's only one in here. I thought I ordered a 10 or 100 millimeters. So let's actually check that. This is for the um, floppy drive repair. 50 by, oh yeah. Yeah, that's correct, I guess. It looks a little bit to the small side. Well, we'll figure it out. We'll put it on there and if it works, then it's okay. But I don't think that this is the right, um, the right belt because I ordered 50. Um, and that's the folded diameter, so or folded length, so squeeze it together and then measure the length and 50 slash 80 is not, uh, I think it should be 50 slash 100, but okay. So stay tuned for a video on, uh, on the belt and we'll continue to the next one. Now I think this one will be heat shrink tube one. Value of three dollars and twenty cents, weight of zero dot one hundred and twenty-five kilograms. I think that it's a little bit more, but it doesn't really matter. Now this is uh, quite a correct uh, specification of what's inside the package. There's a little uh, heat shrink tubing set. I was expecting a few more to be in here. There are 164 pieces apparently. Um, let's take it out of the plastic. I do have another box. I was expecting the box to be like that box. This is kind of a big box. But yeah. It does feel really new in this box, which is uh, cool. And if it's empty, I can use it for whatever fits in there. So now onto the more interesting stuff. 
computer cables and connectors. Well, this is definitely a lot more heavy than 0 0.12 kilograms. Has a value of about ten dollars, which is well, rather expensive. So, um, this is for a new video that I'm working on. Ah, that's why it's so uh, hefty. I didn't know that it uh, came with this bracket. So this is for a new video that I'm working on. Uh, a front panel mod for my Cooler Master 690. I think it's for Mark II uh, case. It doesn't have USB 3.0 or Type-C. Uh, it only has USB 2.0 and it also has eSATA which nobody ever used so yeah I uh, thought it was time to uh, actually make an upgrade do an upgrade so I created my own PCB and ordered it it's still uh, in production right now but I needed this cable for the super speed header of your motherboard to be adapted to the thing that I was uh, using it the type C uh, plug now that this is a receptacle and this one plugs onto my PCB but I didn't know or they even supplied a screw for case mounting that's cool I didn't know that it also came with this bracket thingy which well, obviously goes like this and then you've got another extra super speed uh, port I already have two I think at the back of my motherboard so I'm not in need of a super speed port at the back but rather at the front um, well actually I'm in need of a type C port not a super speed port but you know if you've got the choice then you'd rather make a super speed port than a regular type C port since for future expandability or something you would want a super speed port which is also USB 3 and USB 2 compatible obviously because that's the whole point of USB type C now the last one USB 3.0 tester now this has nothing to do with this thing uh, but this is something that I always wanted always wanted to have and I saw a really nice one I think I saw it on on Pinterest I was googling for it and then I saw an image on Google images and that was that an image that was on Pinterest of this one and it's a, a USB digital tester uh, USB power meter I must say and oh, they even included this uh, adap that's uh, cute this is an adapter for micro B2 or for uh, USB D this is a mil adapter to yeah also mil so you can connect this directly to your smartphone well this is uh, it's quite a, a cute little thing now the main advantage for me was that it has a, a USB Type-C input and a USB input and a Type-C output and a USB output now this obviously allows you to does it also connect? no it only goes in here connect it like this and now you can plug it into your smartphone really nice actually quite uh, cool that they supplied this uh, but of course the USB type C input and output so yeah that's really cool well, actually let's get a oh yeah this is the manual USB energy tester yeah this is mainly used for um, mobile phone testing but supposedly it is also Qualcomm Quick Charge 3.0 compatible 
QC2 and BC1.2, that's BlackBerry Charge, I think, and Apple 2.4a and other protocol quick charging voltage ranges. Cool. I've got a few devices I'd want to test, so yeah, let's get to it. So one of them is my phone. Now I've got a rather long extension cord, but that doesn't really matter. Uh, let's open the battery menu real quick. It's at 70%, which is fine. Um, yeah, USB input. Boom. Damn, that's really crisp. It's an, an OLED display. And it's a really crisp OLED display. Let's peel this off. That's always very satisfying. Wow. Really cool. Is there one at the back too? Yes, there is. Ooh. Another. Wow. Oh, you can see a little bit of the insides over here. There's the beeper. Oh, micro USB input. Oh, that's, see, that's what I meant. This is a really cool device. There's even a micro USB input over here. Wow. I wasn't expecting that. So you can use this to cycle the display and you can hold it to reset it. Whoa, that's uh, quite a high uh, five volt voltage. And you can also see the data signal voltages. I think that this will beep when it's above 35 volts. Less than one. Chinese. Now this reminds me of a uh, a video that I saw of Julian Illet with a solar charge monitor. I'll post that little um, clip. I'll put it inside the video. Let's carry on through here. Uh, there's only one button, so I presume you have to do press and hold. Let's try it actually. Oh no, that changes the display. Okay, so there's about f oh greater than 300 volts. What? Don't think it is. Uh, less than 0 volts. Oh, there may these may be limits. Um, yeah, I don't know. Greater than 100 amps, and we're back to there. Time to start reading the manual, I think. Yeah, look at this lot. Uh, reset button, long press all day to get reset. But the menu kind of looks the same, actually. There you go. Well, let's uh, just insert it into my phone. Now, I don't think that I can do this. No. But the voltage dropped. Which is... Uh, USB output, connected, and now it's connected to my computer, so I expect a maximum current of 500 milliamps, well, which is uh, about correct. The 5 volt voltage actually drops to a rather low value, so that's, uh, hmm. Not sure if it's worrying or not, but and the counter, the time counter stops counting when you unplug the load. So if I insert it and it then starts counting, and if I unplug it, yeah, it stops. So that's uh, really cool. And. Let's get my supercharger for my phone to see how many amps that's putting into my phone. That's connected to the phone. That's a desk charge. It says 5 volt 4 amps. So let's see if that's correct. Ah, that was this thing. So, 
And I'm also expecting power to be over the data lines. So let's insert it. So 0 0.8 amps. There is three volts on the D minus line. But it doesn't look like an answer is getting through for the quick charge system because it's not quick charging. It's only doing a regular charge. And I think that's because it blocks some response of the, uh, of the data line. Or the battery voltage is, or the battery is just too high. It's at 70% right now. It's not quite in need of a charge. Maybe try a different USB cable. Try it like this. Who knows? Oh, now it's quick charging. So let's uh, record this with my phone. All right. So as you can see, it's upside down. 2 amps, 4.5 volts and the phone is talking to the charger I think for the regulation or the phone is just not drawing the total amount of current it's capable of but as you can see the D plus is now 3 volts and D minus is now 0 0.20 volts and that was switched so but I, I still find the voltage rather low. Four and a half volts for a five volt USB charger. So the current is staying at around two amps right now. And yeah, I guess that that's because the my phone is not in need of a, uh, a real supercharge. I mean, it's not at 30% or something. Yeah, yeah, load disconnected, I know. Oh, look at the capacitor that's inside there. Keeps the thing alive for uh, quite some time. There we go. Then it dies. So, well, this will obviously also be really useful to actually measure the power draw of things like an ESP or something. Oh. Well, I've got another thing. Let's, ac let's actually measure the power draw of my new ring LED. Because it's being powered by a 1 amp adapter. And that adapter is getting reasonably hot. Right, color temperature. Oh, it's drawing. Let's switch. Oh, it's actually drawing quite some current. 0 0.7 amps, 700 milliamps. And I think that if I combine both colors, yeah, it's almost at its limit. So the warmer color draws a little bit more than the colder color. And combined, they don't draw double the amount so I think that it's not getting at its full brightness so let's get another charger that's more capable no it stays at uh, 0 0.9 amps around 0 0.9 amps which is okay so yeah USB uh, charge tester quite a useful thing to have to uh, yeah, actually measure USB uh, device current it's almost at an amp. That's quite some uh, quite some power for a ring LED. Well, it's obviously quite large, so it has uh, quite an amount of LEDs inside there. So it's to be expected. So yeah, that's. Uh, let's switch it back to my old regular setup, USB energy tester. Well, I'm going to be using this to see if I can improve the current. Uh, consumption and the power consumption of my home automation devices in the future. By the way, where did I? Oh, here it is. I'm wondering where did I left the uh, the little dongle? Can I do it? Yeah, this should be the same. 
result, but let's uh, see it. I guess then that this is only for the output. Well, it clearly says micro B input, so why isn't this working then? Oh, there you go. It's just a little bit flunky, but it is working. Yeah, I'm not sure if I'm a big fan of this. Oh wait, I've got a 3 amp uh, USB thing. Let's put that onto my... Uh, there you go, this is a good fit. This is a proper fit. Let's use that to power my LED ring. There you go. See, it's... Uh, where is it? There you go, it's brighter now. The output, the current usage and consumption has doubled now. So but this still stays the same. Well, this is also quite high and the voltage is finally what you'd expect, five volts. So that's really good. That's really, really good. So that's, I got a refund for this charger because I didn't think it was capable, but I can clearly see that it is actually capable. Might have to give uh, AliExpress back that money. Unfortunately, these were all the items for today, for this little pre-Christmas uh, or early Christmas post bag, because it really did feel like uh, Santa Claus was early this year with all the, let me list them again. Please let me know down below, uh, what do you think of the Linux project? I totally forgot that during the intro, but please let me know. I've introduced the project multiple times, so it's going to be a project that's yeah about Linux, creating a custom embedded system that uh, runs Linux. And I'll be building uh, a compiler from scratch, or well, I'll be compiling a compiler. I'm not going to build a compiler, but uh, for that uh, specific system and I'll be compiling uh, Linux, U-Boot, uh, etc. All that stuff that's really required uh, to actually use it. So please let me know down below what you think of that idea and if I should do it. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye. Hey guys, this is Tim. I hope you liked that video. If you want to see more, please make sure to subscribe. Uh, you can also share the video with your friends and hit that like button. I'll see you in the next one.